In the past 12 months, Wigan Foot surpassed $1.4 billion in sales. There are over 50,000 certified non-GMO products on the market. 3.1 million Americans eat a gluten-free diet. Sales in 2018 were $4.7 billion. 88% of U.S. households have consumed organic food and beverages. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. I'm kind of noticing some confused faces in the audience right now, and I don't blame you. You're probably wondering, why does this team have this slide up, and they just shared facts with us regarding vegan, gluten-free, non-GMO, and organics? There were four powerful facts, though. Let's really think about it. What do they have in common? Here's what I think. They're all things we once laughed at, we shrugged our shoulders at, we called them fads. How many of us probably said at one time, there is no way my customer is going to pay $2 more for a pound of organic apples? Or, you really want to merchandise gluten-free bread in the bread section? To me, it's kind of funny saying that and hearing it. But what's the truth about these items? They were disruptors in our industry. They changed the demand of our customer, and they changed the way they shopped. And unfortunately, it created a void that we were unwilling to fill at the time, and it allowed new competition to come in and chip away at our profits. So let's have a little fun today and pretend we have a time machine. And let's go back 20 years. I want everyone in the room to think about how you would attack these items differently. What would your approach be? If you were a CPG, imagine the money we could have saved not having to acquire these brands to remain relevant. Or if you were a retailer, how you would have brought these brands in quicker to be able to block competition like Whole Foods coming in and stealing customers. But the past is the past, and we're not here to dwell on that today. We've also taken this time machine just a couple years into the future, and we have some exciting news. We've discovered the next buzz term, and it's right here behind me, zero waste, li zero waste lifestyle. For many of you, this is nothing new. This is circulating in our news every day. For others, you might be shaking your head, concerned that you got another tree hugger on your hands. But I want to let you know that is not the case. The reason that we are here today is we want you to know this isn't just the right thing to do, it is the profitable thing to do. My team and I are going to share with you the movement that is currently going on and how it's gaining traction, how this movement is going to lead to inevitable regulations in our industry, simple ways to implement our solution into your everyday business, some of our largest competitors that are already thinking about this. But most importantly, we want you all to leave having this on top of your mind. This time around, we need to be the leaders when it comes to zero waste and not the followers. My name is Kevin Hughes, and I work with PepsiCo. I'm Steve Witten with UNFI. I'm Christy Hossman with King Supers and City Market. I'm Kyle Hetman with Gelson's Markets. I'm Bayala Gulam, and I'm with Albertsons. Let me take you back in time five years ago when I was first promoted to store manager. Back then, my store did under 10% in organic sales. Today, we do over 25%, and that number is growing. I did not see this happening. In fact, I was shocked and surprised by how many customer complaints I was getting on a regular basis because we did not have the variety or the selection my customers were looking for. Now, some of you are thinking, what does sustainability have to do with organics? We're here to tell you sustainability is the new organics. Take a look at the graph. Over the past five years, sustainable product sales grown by $30 billion. It is expected that by 2021, sustainable sales will account for 25% of your store sales, and it will be a market of $150 billion. I want you to think what this graph will look like in five years or 10 years from now on. Right now, we have the opportunity in front of us to start transitioning our stores to waste reduction. By doing this, we will be gaining competitive advantage and we will be differentiating ourselves from competition and our customers will choose to shop in our stores because we will be providing what they want and what they need. Studies have shown that over 50% of US consumers are changing their shopping habits to reduce their impact on the environment. 75% of millennials are willing to pay more for sustainable products. So what are we waiting for? We need to act now. For years, trendiest people care what they put into their body. 
the new trend is going to be people care what they put into their body and people care what they put into the earth. Now let's take a look at what is driving this trend. So what's driving this is wasting the environment. This picture, it's disgusting. This is just one of thousands of images that depicts what's going on in the environment. Over 8 million tons of plastic flows into our oceans every single year. The marine life, they see the plastic, they think it's food and they're eating it, and it's killing them. Microplastics are also in our food chain. A recent study has discovered nanoplastics in human stool samples. We are consuming plastic. So what are we doing to ourselves? And what kind of world are we leaving for our children and our grandchildren? When you leave here today, I encourage you, do the research yourself. Read these facts. Look at the images. It's going to startle you. It's much worse than what I imagined. And what does this picture also tell us? The plastic recycling, it's not working. Only 9% of plastic is recycled. And of the portion that does get recycled, we have another problem. In 2018, China passed a policy banning plastic imports into their country. The US no longer has a large enough source to send their plastic to. And it's just piling up in the US. So how many of you in the audience, how many of you recycle today? Wow. That's a lot of hands. Thank you very much for your effort. But what's really concerning is the effort that we're making in recycling may still be going up into the landfill anyway, because there's just too much of it. The recycling can't handle the volume. Instead, we need to reduce our use of plastic and our production of plastic. We need to change, all of us here in this room. It's our corporate social responsibility. If we don't change, more regulations are coming. Thank you, Christy. So what does this picture say to you? What thoughts come into your mind when you look at that? I know it's powerful. To me, it says we're all partly to blame. Everyone in this room today is partly to blame for the current crisis. But we have to ask the question, do regulations change behavior? Last year, 91 pieces of waste regulation passed all across the United States, mostly at the local level, but 91? That's one new regulation every four days. There are currently 30 pieces of waste regulation being debated in Sacramento right now. And I'm pretty sure we can all agree that some of those laws are going to be pretty difficult to follow. Also last year, the European Union enacted a law that bans 10 commonly used plastic items, such as cutlery, spoons, bags, straws. So, do regulations change behavior? And they absolutely do. In the 1970s, plastic bags were seen as the future, and now they're public enemy number one. Straws are next. I just read a report that hotel shampoos and conditioners are going to be outlawed soon, too. What comes next? Is my Tide bottle going to be outlawed? Is, is my Windex container going to be banned? Bags cost 10 cents now. How much is a soda going to cost in the future? California Redemption Value. Currently, a 24-pack, 16.9-ounce bottle of water has five cents per unit. But what happens when, due to pending new regulation, those CRV costs go up? Let's say a dollar a unit. Let's take the laundry industry, for example. 2018, in the United States, there were 2.417 billion units of laundry sold. What if each one of those units had a dollar CRV? That's an additional $2.417 billion that we would be passing on to our consumers. How much is enough? When are our consumers finally going to say enough is enough? And they're going to look for alternative channels and formats to find the products they want. This is Loop. It's an initiative launching next month, actually. It's a partnership of 25 of the major CPGs of the world. PepsiCo, Danone, Nestle, Unilever, Procter & Gamble. 
The platform works like this. Consumers go to the online loop marketplace. They purchase the products. A UPS reusable tote is delivered to their home. They use the products in new, sleek, sustainable packaging. When they're finished with the product, place it back in the tote, it's sent to a loop reuse center where the product is cleaned, sanitized, refilled, and recycled in this new circular economy. This is what the packaging looks like. Sleek, stylish, sustainable, reusable. Let's get these new packages into our stores and onto our shelves. Let's be part of this circular economy. And you know what? Places like Europe are already on this. Waste reduction movement is happening all over the world, not just here. In fact, if we look at Europe, Europe is ahead of us when it comes to waste reduction efforts. Zero waste shops are opening all over the Europe, and your European consumer demands are higher than ours. 88% of UK shoppers demand package information on sustainability. 92% of Europeans will choose plastic-free option when given the choice. 75% of Germans will choose not to purchase products because of the sustainability. And 36% of Europeans will boycott brands or package sustainability. Now let's look at what we can implement here in the States. So on to the brick and mortar experience. So first imagine in our stores we have aisles or air areas that are dedicated just to zero waste. Now we've already taken steps in this direction. Think about it. We have dry bulk food in our stores already. Let's take this and expand it. Include more items in those areas. Let's get rid of the plastic bags also for the dry bulk. And instead, consumers can use refillable containers. Next, imagine a wall full of many, many multiple dispensers that has liquid bulk in it. It could have oils or vinegars in this, or maybe a wall of shampoos and conditioners. I think that'd be really cool. Or let's move into our laundry detergent aisle. The fixtures here could be the new sleek state-of-the-art vendor dispensing machines, or perhaps the really nice wooden-looking fixtures to dispense the bulk from. CPGs and retailers will partner on the fixtures expense. And again, consumers, they can bring in their own reusable containers to refill the bulk liquid. So many of you are probably thinking, why is the consumer going to want to take this extra step and make an effort to do bulk refill themselves? Well, first of all, for the consumer that still wants the convenience, we'll have it for them. They'll have their product in alternative packaging ready to buy. But for the consumer that's ready to take that extra step and make the effort to refill, they'll be able to do this. And for them, the product will cost less. They'll have less food waste and product waste. And we're eliminating the package from the environment. Moving to zero waste and zero economy, or circular economy, customers are demanding it. They want this. We see what's happening in Europe. It's happening in the US. Moving to this, we will gain customers. We'll earn their visit and their revisits, and we'll earn their sales. Now let's take a look at what profit is driving this. So I think it's pretty clear that the movement's already arrived. I'd also say it's pretty clear how passionate we are about this subject. But we're realists, and we get it. And we know questions are coming. And the most obvious one to us is, so how much does this cost? What's going to be our return on investment? And going back to the slide that Christy just showed us, let's go to the laundry detergent aisle. And we're looking at replacing 16 feet of our traditional setup with this new technology for the refillable circular economy. I got good news on that, too. We were able to partner with some vendors that already created this technology, and we learned it's about $17,000 to replace that 16 feet. So pretty exciting with that. The other good news is we're looking at forecasting revenue grows up 4%. And where we see that coming from is what's been happening in Europe and what we spoke about earlier, the, the craze that's going on in the US. EBITDA would also follow, increasing from 1% to 4%. But there would also be opportunities to save on the reduction in package costs 
and potential labor dollars being removed for not having to restock. IRR is an important one to all of us. And in calculating that, we're looking at three and a half years. So that's some really good news today. I think you think about $17,000 and a three and a half year return on investment. That's something to be excited about. But I get it. There's another follow-up question to that. You're asking our team, that's awesome, but it's only 16 linear feet in my 50,000 square foot store. How is that going to make a difference? But let me take you back to where I left, last left you all off at. Is what is one thing everyone in this room is good at? It is promoting. Just take a walk down your produce aisles and look at how many organic signs you have up. This is what we do well. And I want to leave you with this. Think big and act small. What is the easiest way to eat an elephant? It is one bite at a time. And that's how we approach this. Imagine being a retailer and being able to tell your community you're the first grocery store in the country to offer a refillable laundry station. That is powerful. Or if you're a laundry detergent, being the first laundry detergent in the country to have a refillable station at every retailer in the nation. Those are the things we're looking to do. You guys are going to hear some really great ideas today. Six of them, as a matter of fact. But I'll let you know this is the only one that's going to happen now. I don't want you leaving today and in two months getting punched in the face because you didn't address this subject. Also don't want you to think, this is such a good idea, we need to put this on the agenda for 2020 because it's going to be too late. I need you all to get in your cars when you're driving home today and start making some phone calls and close some deals because this is coming. And if there's anyone in the room left that doesn't believe me that this is happening, let me share with you what some of our largest competitions doing. Thanks, Kevin. Trader Joe's, Amazon, Walmart, Aldi, what do they all have in common? Well, first, there are competitors. Secondly, they're non-union operators. But just as important as they get the issue, they understand the importance of it. Like it or not, this is the issue of the 21st century. Trader Joe's is committed to reducing plastic in their produce department, and Aldi is committed to working with more sustainable brands. They're making headlines right now. It's time we made some headlines of our own. Albertsons reduced its plastic sales by 25% in 2020, while, gro while growing gr profits by 7%. Come to Gelson's and see SoCal's first plastic-free aisle. Come to King Supers and experience a zero-waste laundry refill station sponsored by Ecos. PepsiCo adds reusable packaging to Quaker Oats to grow profits 30%. UNFI partners with packaging company to distribute reusable containers. Organics, non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free. As my colleague Kevin alluded to earlier, we have a time machine. And we've seen the future. Full transparency, we don't have a time machine. If we did, we'd be in Vegas right now placing large bets on the NBA playoffs. But what we do know is this. The zero waste movement is here to stay. And it's going to be profitable and it's going to be scalable for your retailers, your brands, and distributors alike. So let's act now. Don't wait. Let's act right now, today. Thank you so much and we would like to open the floor to questions. Perfect. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Donna Tyndall with Gelson's. Great presentation. Uh, I think you're right on as far as this is the future. My question is, you mentioned that you would suggest you do one aisle at a time or one commodity at a time. So did you do any comparisons between, say, the uh, liquid de um, detergent aisle and a different aisle? Which aisle do you think is the most important to do first? I can take that. Well, I think the order that I presented in, um, where dry bulk food, we had that today. So that's an easy place to start, expanding it, adding more dry bulk into those areas. And again, removing the plastic that we currently have there that, that the consumers use to fill. They can use other containers. Then next, rather than bulk liquid, I think going into laundry, that would be a great place to start. 
Um, we've been losing a lot of sales online with laundry detergent. What a great way to get that consumer back in, those that really want to support bulk refill. Also, since you directed it to me, um, we feel laundry is the easiest aisle to start with. You're not dealing with any you know, health violations or any extra issues with um, packaging and food waste and things like that. So we felt like laundry was the easiest one. So no, we didn't really compare it to, you know, ranch dressing in the dressing aisle, you know, just something not, more, not as plausible as that. I'd like to add uh, one more thing. It'll be the convenience for our customers. They'll be able to have the opportunity of choosing how much they buy, six ounces, eight ounces, instead of buying those big jugs and sitting in their closet for one year. I'm an, I'm an example of those. <laughs> Anyone else? Did you do any analysis on creating value for the customer to have to deal with bringing their own containers, dealing with, you know, so to get them better engaged and to make this work, if you're reducing the packaging cost and lowering the cost of goods, did you do any analysis to say we can create better value if you buy it this way versus the traditional way? I can take that. Thank you for the question. We looked at packaging costs on some comparable dishwashing detergents and we found that 25 to 30% of the costs were just the package. How much are the costs right now for plastic or paper bags? We, we realized that if we can reduce upwards of 30% of those single use costs, we have a jar of Quaker Oats or a container of Tide or Ecos detergent, after only four or five trips, you're gonna be paying for yourself when you have that container in a sustainable format. Right here. Um, I'm interested in that time machine, if, if you're going that direction. <laughs> Great. Well, if I also had the time machine, I would have made it so that Kyle hadn't had me bet on the Rams winning the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> Unfortunately. When I'm thinking through this and when it scales out, what do you think the ultimate is going to happen here with variety? Do you think that the variety is going to go down? When you see a plethora of variety explosion in all these categories, is this going to be affected by that? Uh, I'll take that one. So um, keep going. Go uh, two more. In fact, Kevin, you guys are great at variety. Yeah. You, you, you guys come out with every flavor known to man. The whole shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Soda Street, now on shelves. No, we just, um, no, we, we, uh, it's funny because we released something today, but if you guys can see the bottom left-hand corner, this is one of the things that inspired our ideas. This is kind of a new thing in, in the beer industry where you can go in and you pour your own. And that's how we would almost envision, um, say, a laundry detergent aisle where if you're Ecos, you would be able to have your six different you know, flavors or brands, whatever you want to call it, on there. And if you can see there, there's little LCD screens where it kind of gives a description of what you're purchasing. So we wouldn't look at it as you would have to be eliminating. You wouldn't be going like, hey, we're going to get rid of six SKUs and only have one on this pump. That was more of a small format one. If you're like in a traditional grocery store, that's kind of how we envision this, where you, know, you would still be able to, to, to hold your whole portfolio. You guys uh, did a very nice job. You really caught my attention when you mentioned uh, hotels uh, discontinuing the shampoo and conditioner. I realized in my life I may have to pay for shampoo and conditioner again. <laughs> I just, I just uh, won't, you know, they won't match my towels anymore, which will be a problem. But um, it seems to me that uh, the the bulk of the issue is more with water and beverages. Yet you guys are talking more about uh, the soap aisle. Uh, you didn't really mention beverage and water. What are your comments there as far as having an impact? Take it if you want. Really? So we figured, <laughs> Kevin likes the analogy, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. We're starting with laundry because we see that as not necessarily daily trips you're going to be making to the store to purchase a new container of detergent or fabric softener. Um, with PET bottles, aluminum cans, we, we've seen definite developments. In, with PepsiCo's acquisition of SodaStream, you know, in-home consumers or possibly bringing your own jars and, and using CO2 distri distribution centers at stores to carbonate your beverages. Um, and we I, think, and I think uh, oh. Nestle's doing something too with Avion right there. Yes. It's on Avion. Yeah. Um, home dispenser. And home dispenser as well. Yeah. So, and a lot, of, a lot of stores now carry Hydro Flask or you know, Yeti cups. I mean, every one of us in this room, I mean, you go to our class in the morning and everyone's got a reusable water cup or reusable coffee cup. So little by little, one thing at a time, um, you can eat the elephant. Right, and I'd like to add just one more thing to that also. 
really our objective is to eliminate plastic over time. Now, is this ever going to eliminate all of plastic? Probably not, but perhaps we'll get to the point where recycling then can actually handle the amount of volume that we do have. Good. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.